welcome to Kids Corner. Uh, today we have uh, Casey Morley. Did I pronounce that correctly? Yes, Casey, Casey Morley. Morley. Hi, uh, welcome to uh, Kids Corner. I am so happy uh, that you're here today. Uh, Casey is an uh, author of uh, this book, Crawling Out. I don't know if you can see that. Maybe the cameraman can show this. Um, can you tell us um, how does it feel being an author? Is this your first time? It's my first book, yes. Uh, and um, one thing I would have to say is it's so much more work than anyone could imagine. Oh, <laughs> really? There's, there's uh, just so much to get the book together. Together? You know, you, the writing process for me was long because I did it in between my work and raising my son. And Oh, and uh, your son was young, and you're, he you was. were writing on uh, regular paper. I did. Yeah, keyboard. you remember that? Yes. Yeah, I, I wrote, real paper and pencils. Yeah. I, I I call it my trusty old legal pad, <laughs> <laughs> and I normally would write at two or three in the morning. I used to say while well, my little guy slept, but he's six foot six now, so wow, I not can't so little really, anymore. Yeah, right. Can't say that anymore, right? Right, and I also remember thinking I pretty quite naively. If I had just helped one woman who walked in my shoes, all this writing would be worth, worth it. <laughs> Has it happened for you? Did helped you know? one woman? I'm um, sure it's helped one and more. Exactly. Right, so the, you've been uh, back more than you have. That's terrific. So um, you said it took you a while to write? It was an eight-year process. process from a rich, starting from the first page to... Um, putting chapters together, and then an editor, and then finding the publishing process. So it was eight years. Eight years? Mm -hmm. Wow, I didn't realize how long. Yeah. Because uh, you can't edit it, you have to find editors. Well, you could edit your own work, but it's... You want it professional. Well, sure. I just think it's, you know... Dot your I's and cross the T's. Mm -hmm. and, and my editor, Nancy Hooper, she... Um, she, she would say she makes the page bleed. <laughs> she makes the page Because <laughs> of the red ink, you know? <laughs> oh, got you. Yes. And, and when I talk about oh. it, like at the salon, you know, because she's my client as well. Uh, know, what did you do? What I'm do you do? A, I own a salon. Oh. Casey's Image Consultants. Ah, there you go. And I also That's do. That's why your hair looks so great. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> but I, and I also do lifestyle wellness coaching. Oh, what is I, that? I help people cleanse their bodies. Oh. Like, um, I mostly attract candida people, and that's an over infestation of yeast. Hmm. And for myself, I struggled with that for five years. And You pointed to your stomach. Because it, it, it's your it, intestinal. But oh. it could be so bad, it could go through your whole body. Like, you could have brain fog and hmm. and... And you crave things, and what keeps it alive are your cravings. Like, it'll oh. crave coffees and sugars and fruits yeah. and stuff like that. And that, hmm. that's what I kind of describe it like if you had a little plant and you watered it lovingly, and now it's beautiful, mm -hmm. and then you to decide not to water it, you could see it withering and you know in a few days it's going to be gone. Right. But then if you gave it like a shot of water, shot glass of water, right. you gave it more life. Oh. And that's the same thing with candida. If you don't eradicate it totally. So I just need a shot and then I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just joking. Yeah. Uh, that sounds... Uh, so that's just a little piece of... Of, of what you do. Yes. Did, did you write about that in your book? No. You said it says crawling out, and there's a little girl holding her teddy bear, in yeah. case um, you haven't seen. Um, and it took, she's saying, Casey is saying that it took eight years. This is your first. Um, so how how's it feel when when you wrote the book? Did someone coming up to you and say you're a writer? How how'd that feel? You know, I almost um, haven't taken full ownership of it. it no. It feels like it's not me. Oh. It, and it's still kind of scary. Yeah. You know, because um, I don't know what's expected of me. I'm not a professional speaker, but I'm up there. You know, I have a group of 35, 45, 100. You know, I've spoken at Northeastern University. You did. Wow. I spoke at Anna Maria in Paxton, Mass. Wow. I spoke at a, for a group at UConn. At UConn. Mm -hmm. Wow. So uh, at a Respect Life conference. So they're they're kind of big. Yeah. 
You said mention something about Obama too. Oh, how exciting! Oh, Wait till God. you hear this. I I'm having the book revised, only because um, even this is kind of uh, comical. See, you hardly see my name. Yes. Well, now it's, you see how bright crawling out is? Yes. Well, Casey Morley is going to be right across there, just oh, as bright. Yes. Oh, yes, of course. And then I shortened my um, subtitle to just One Woman's Journey to Break the Cycle of Abuse because um, last year, on August 1st, I got a letter from President Barack Obama. <gasps> admiring my courage wow and i almost threw it away oh no yeah. you didn't think it was real can't be well i didn't even how did know. barack obama oh i wrote them a reading? letter oh yeah and you I, sent him a book of course oh see i'm kind of an out of a box thinker yeah so i said how am i going to get notice of the president and so i I, of course, do research statistics are alarming so my letter addressed to mr and mrs Obama mm -hmm. was all around girls his their children's age, oh. and you know basic kind of of what happened to you was around the same. Well, stage. what what they could be um, ahead of them, you know, right. when they're turning twelve and fourteen or whatever. Yeah. So and then I learned that the president gets three point eight billion letters a year. Oh, and yours got and through? answers ten a day. Wow. Yeah, and he wrote saying he admires my courage wow. and that victims aren't alone. So in the revision, we have a sentence from President Barack Obama on the top. Wow. And then inside, I don't know if you know Dr. Bernie Siegel. I don't. I'm sorry. Who is he? Dr. I'm Bernie. Sure there's a many he, out there say, what? You don't know him? <laughs> he, hmm. he likes to be called Bernie. Okay. But I call him Dr. Bernie. Okay. Um, he gave me a testimonial, and I love a piece of it. It's like I, in a way, will be reparenting parents. Oh. And uh. he's actually a doctor. He's, he's in his 80s now, but he oh. was a well-known doctor out of Yale, New Haven. Wow. And helped cancer people, um, patients, heal through love, basically. Through love? Yeah. He would, he would tell people they love them. Because a lot of people get cancer because it just of past really seriously issues, you know, past eats issues. up inside, well, like yeah, they said. Yeah. Past issues, you know, of, mm -hmm. of trauma or, or um, neglect. Yeah. I mean, neglect is one of the most important yeah. um, forms of abuse. Most people don't even think of it. No. And 70% of victims are neglected. They are neglected. Mm -hmm. They said it starts when you're a child. You know, you were oh, abused? Well, I, I've done Most. some research, and I believe children are what they live, for, right. an, for an example. That's what they're being taught. Yes. So I didn't even ever hear of the word dysfunction until I was 35. 35. Oh, and wow. someone said, I come from a dysfunctional family, and I'm like, what's that? Yeah, serious. What does that mean? I had to go home and look it up. Oh. And then I was like, oh my, I come from that. Yeah. And then my son's father, it took me like four hours, and I'm like, oh, so does Tony. Tony's his name in the book, so I went to use Tony. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it devastated me. I really, the, the more I conceived what was really going on and how big this was. I felt like I was diagnosed with an incurable cancer. Wow. A therapy well, session right. or two was not going to fix it. No, mm. no, no, definitely not. So uh, going back to that children, yep. um, dysfunctional families repeat history, you know, so it's generation after generation. So this, this dysfunction is programmed in little children's heads. Yes. Your brain is is in theta from zero to six. And that's your your brain's like a sponge. There's no filter. So it just keeps, you know, yeah. the yelling, the screaming, the swearing, what, whatever. They don't even have to be hit or Oh, no, 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 no. It's just all just there. They don't there. even have to be in the area. Well, yeah. Could Christine, be upstairs and listening to well, it. That's like, of course, that's like a... Um, in direct victimization, yes. you know, the yelling, Second the screaming, hand. the smashing of things, um, 
eyewitnessing or, or the after effects of bruises, police visits, perhaps relocation. I mean, all of that, yeah. you know, or family members, alcoholics Maybe. in jail or, you know, yeah. it, there's just so much to it. Abandonment, neglect. Yes. Uh, yes. Um, and for me, victimized, terrorized, traumatized, never good enough. So I always say, if this is so embedded in your brain, and we operate from our brains 98% of the time, oh. of our subconscious minds, oh. that's pretty scary. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And if you really spend some time on that, mm -hmm. you really don't control what you do. No. Your subconscious mind does. Well, you think you, you think you got a handle on it. I'm good, you know, I'm fine. I'm not like them, you know, whoever them, you know, they don't <laughs> want to know. Yeah. Right. Um, but it comes out in some ways, like you said, through sickness, you know, maybe, you know, like you the, say. The in candida. The, in the, yeah. Oh, also the things like, I never felt safe. I never felt I was enough. Uh, yeah, you have, your self-esteem. You, yes. Um, plus, like. I was going to be an, a CPA, but oh. I had to move out at 16. 16? Mm -hmm. So young? Yeah, because oh. um, my mother's boyfriend was molesting me for years. Wow. And then he, he would, once I started to catch on, mm -hmm. like 13-ish, something's not right. Mm -hmm. This is really not a father-daddy thing. But the first few years, I was excited I finally had a dad. Wow, yeah. So then. You know, I, you start, and of course, but way back then, yeah. I'm not 29, Things are you different. know. <laughs> sure you look like 29. <laughs> but anyway, so, you know, 11, 12, 13 year old is not 12 or 13 today. No. So I started to realize something's not right. And then he started scaring me, threatening me. I would go to bad girl school and, uh, you know, then make I, it like it's your fault. Oh, definitely. So then, and your self-esteem and self-image, and everything then you just... carry that secret. Right. You carry that shame and guilt, you know. And then you carry, even if in the subconscious mind, becoming a hairdresser was just something to do because I couldn't go to accountant school. I had to leave oh. my car home with right. my mother. Oh, so she could use it. Oh, just 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 because it, it was in her name, but I paid uh, for it. You know uh, what I mean. No, so I couldn't walk to Harford. No. You know what I mean. So then, yeah. the next best Strap. thing was become a hairdresser. Uh, so I walked to school, walked to work, and you yeah. know, I got one little apartment bigger, put next the next little bigger, and you know, and then yeah. I had a junk car, the little bit better car, and uh, then I moved to Southington, and then I was managing a salon, and then wow. I bought a red Mustang convertible. <laughs> oh way! Yeah, and you I was have like, my car. How did you get it? And I, <laughs> oh, I, the best part was it's either red or blue or Mustang I, convertible at the, at yeah. the um, traffic light. I would love to see people behind me and then put that top down okay, and, and uh, then crank the tunes. <laughs> <laughs> I made it. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. From where you came and then mm. where you are now, that's amazing. Thank you. And Thank it just you. goes to show, you know, the one listening that, you know, the same for you. Um, and you can call 211 or 911, um, depending on what's going on. And I know it's not always safe. Um, and um, sometimes, you know, even when they're younger, I know a lot of times, sometimes it'll, all of a sudden it'll just come out and you're in your 50s. And it happened when you were younger. And um, I, I heard about the story where the lawyer was uh, talking to someone who had raped someone. Uh, it was, you know, he was under oath and uh, it was in, during the session. And then she just came out and roar, you know, and mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. found out she had been raped. So you just don't know how that's going to come out. It needs to be tended to. For everybody, their journey is different. That's why I call my book a tool. You know, I, I believe it, it, for some, it's enlightenment. They don't even know they're in it. I'd, like, I didn't know I was in it. You know, for some, it's permission to unmask the secrecy. Yes. Others, the, sh the shame and guilt. It, it, I, it gives people hope. They too have the strength to crawl, crawl out. The feedback has been ridiculously phenomenal. And what's most shocking to me, senior men write me letters and Facebook, you know, like not even private message. I now see the part I've played. 
Oh, they do. I too drank they too realize, much. Yeah. I too spent the family money. I too was not nice to my wife. You know, I too, I too. And seeing what do I do? Or well, do they're they go? right. And then, and senior women, your book gave yes. me permission to cry. Wow. And then they say, and I'm now in therapy. Wow. That, yeah. That's got to. I gotta, would yeah. never dream. I, Casey Morley, yeah, you, you know, this side. broken little girl from Meriden, Connecticut, yeah. would touch lives so deeply. And and every time I say that, I get goosebumps every oh, single wow. still. Oh, me, yes. And that every was one of my questions. How, how do you know if anyone's, uh, have, you, have you helped anyone? Oh, I get letters constantly. Every time I talk, like I just talked at um, First Lutheran in Southington. Yes. And, um, but no matter where, I talked to St. Dominic's, you know, a lot of local churches, and I get many people fixated on me wow. like this, you wow. know, they don't take, they don't even blink, I don't wow. think. Do they ask you, is it because you're author or be, author or because? Well, a lot of it is. Um, questions on their own abuse. They'll hold my book up and, and say, you just told my See story. My yeah. One girl said to me, oh, my God, I finally met a sister I didn't know I had. Uh, I mean, it's all kinds of, yes. yes. And, and I was just at one talk a few months back, and um, this one woman, even her body language, I was like over here, and she was like, she wasn't going to look at me. But like every 10 minutes, she just turned a little bit, a little bit, you know, a little uh. bit. And, she was the first one to come up and say, everything I said about what is normal, like how do you know what's normal? Yeah. You know, how do you get out of something you don't know you're in? You didn't in? know, you were 35 and you were like dysfunctional. And I it mean, took me 20 years to, to find that freedom. Yeah. Because um, it's not a straight line from no, A to B. It's not. You know, you just don't say, oh, okay, I got it. I got this dysfunctional name on my, my chest. Yeah. And let's just open a door. So isn't everybody else, so what? So, yeah, 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 exactly. You know, I'm living, I'm okay. So. I get confessions. Wow. One man, he confessed, um, I'm an alcoholic, I'm, I'm so many years clean, um, I did terrible things, you know, like, I get all wow. kinds of stuff. Yeah. Um, do you have uh, websites or someplace they can go? I mean, if they're willing to change, are they saying they're willing to change now that they seen the light, so to speak? Well, again, everyone has their own process, you know, and I, I always make it clear, I'm not a therapist or a counselor or a doctor, you know, right. but a lot of people do Referrals, like- Referrals, I mean, yeah. can you refer? I would, I would say, because, you know, you don't know how deep issues go know, or right. what triggers are there. Yeah, and you want to know, I'm not, I'm just the writer. I'm just- Right, yeah. so on my website, I do have two of them. You have a website? Two. Can, can you uh, let me know and let them for more information? Actually, one of them um, that I kind of try to keep about the book and book comments or things like that is crawlingout.net. And then I also have caseymorley.com. And sometimes they kind of mix. Cross, in, yeah, yeah, sometimes. It's kind of hard because I'm both of them. <laughs> you, yeah. you know what I mean? <laughs> or 10 of them. Wow. <laughs> So you've come a long ways, and you brought this to many places. Um, you had mentioned also the motorcycle guys. Oh, at my book launch, mm -hmm. I was so excited. I was a nervous wreck. I didn't know what I'm doing. You know, I still don't know what I'm doing. I just take it one step at a time, trusting God will. You know, and I learned this new word um, from Doreen Virtue. Did you know that author? No, I. Don't. Oh, she's pretty cool. She's, they call her the angel lady, but she calls okay. it Godfidence. Confidence. And well, what I that is, it. is um, trusting that God wants you to keep doing your work while you're learning. Uh, so I'm just doing confidence. <laughs> yeah. It's what you feel through sight and you well, I feel like I, I always said what I, you should do or say. This, well, it's everything, even your next step. You know, I always said this has been divinely guide, guided. I never said, okay, Casey, let's just try to write a book now. You're I right. never did that, no. you know. And I don't even know what my next step is tomorrow is right you know I was led like for an example um, someone said to me I should be careful what audience I say God in oh and I was like oh, that's, ooh. that's your preference your right to say yeah what helped you but you're not preaching about it but I, no but I I, you. I didn't want to um, ever have to worry about 
um, where I was saying God. That's why I decided I would knock on church doors. Oh. Hey, hi, I'm Casey. Oh. It's really not like that, but you right. know, I tried yeah. to find somebody who knows somebody, Absolutely. knows yeah. the pastor or the priest, right. or, you know. So, um, are you two questions? I'm sorry, I'm throwing them both at you because we only have like five minutes. But is there another book? Or are we expecting another book? Mm. And what do you plan on going going from here? What's your goal? Um, Many people keep saying I should write a second book because they just admire, you know, that I raised a son and um, he's got his bachelor's in criminal justice. He's starting his master's last wow, month. Wow, you must be proud. He's employed at Quinnipiac wow, University. Good for you. And he's clean. Good for him. You know, he's, yeah. he's 24 and a half years old and never smoked, never drank. He's 24 and a half and he's got his master's? Wow. No, he's, no, he just started that program. Oh, just, yeah, 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 yeah. still a so, um, yeah. so people look at me like, oh, wow, look all that you've done and, and how much you've come. And I used to be yeah. a little bit chubby. Oh, we never know. <laughs> Got to tell me your secret. <laughs> the candida the was candida. the problem, so I have, I'll talk more to you about okay. that. Another show. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I would love to come back uh -huh. again. That would be great. Um, so I don't know about another book, but it would probably be like, um, this is how I, what happened after Curling Out was um, printed. And oh, and it's my the one with Barack and all that is, was... Um, sent to the printer September 20, so like oh. next week I should be able oh, to see next it live. Week. Yeah, wow. yeah. So I'll be back on Amazon then, you know, because when oh, you... Oh, that's where, okay. Because you got to come off when you do revisions and stuff like that, okay. so, you know. Oh. So, oh, I didn't um, know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's all good though. How we'll many see. pages are in this one? 308. 308? Mm -hmm. Wow. So uh, this pretty much just tells your whole life story of of what you went through, the abuse, how long you were there, and how you got through it? Well, it doesn't tell my whole story because I learned really early on um, why you write something people couldn't get through. Yeah, right. So it's just some of my story. Okay, yeah, because some it is very hard to read, and it, it could if bring back the PTSD things that happened to them. For some, yeah. Yeah, some. yeah. And for others, they whip through it in a weekend, they tell me. Yeah. I know, I've seen you, uh, sorry it's been so long, we've both been busy, you know, like three years ago, you were just telling me, I'm like, no, yeah. I thought it was just yesterday. Oh, and you mentioned the Bikers Against Child Abuse. Oh, yes. oh yeah, they were at yeah, my book launch. I, my yeah. book launch was oh, in a, yeah, at a golf course in Southington, Northridge. Yes. And what was the best part, I mean, besides their support, um, they were coming in, you know. Oh. <laughs> and then they, were, they waited till they all arrived so they could walk in as a group. Uh -huh. And someone told them that it was a private party. <laughs> they oh, couldn't, no. Yeah. <laughs> but they said, they told me later, they said, oh, no. Uh, she, uh, we are the private said, party. <laughs> they said, she invited us. Right. And they were like, whoa. So, yeah. And they just, they were so phenomenal. They stood yeah. at the at the sliding door, you know, like no one's going to get Casey. It's, you know? Yeah, in or out. And then yeah. um, I said, before you guys and girls go, someone's got to bring a bike up here. So I got this uh -huh. awesome picture of me on one of the motorcycles uh -huh. and all the, all the um, bikers against child abuse are behind me. Oh, that's that was an awesome picture. Pretty that would exciting. Have been, yeah, I almost boy. brought it today. Oh, maybe next time. Next time. <laughs> yeah, they were on uh, my show once. One of the shows I've had. They were excellent. Great people. Yeah, yeah great, a great heart to do what they do and helping children go through, um, they have to go through court or their abusers yeah, come yeah. in and they they protect them. I was hoping they were going to bring me a teddy bear, but they did it. Because, you know, they give all their, their children that, you know. Oh, yeah. Like I say, one for you, a child. And did you know that, that that child gets two bikers and they can call them anytime? Oh, yes. 24-7. Yes, actually, I didn't know it was two, but they said, yeah. yes, they can call them anytime. That is my understanding. And they would be know. right there. Yeah, exactly. They don't care where you are. Mm-hmm. There, you go into court or wherever they, you want. Right, right. Yeah. Um, so I think we have like maybe one minute if you just want to say th something really fast, um, really quick. Um, maybe your website? Oh. Um, for more information? www.kcmorley.com mm -hmm. or www.crawlingout.net. Oh. 
uh, I thank you very much um, for coming again. And uh, I'm looking forward to uh, you coming back on the show and tell us about the candida, yes. the whole health thing. Oh. I'll come back and you say, all right, this is what happened. This is me before and, and after it, her. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's really unbelievable. But, yes. So. Okay, so thank so, you. Thank you so much. Yes. It's my pleasure. And thank you for tuning in to Kids Corner, and we'll see you again next week. Thank you. Kids Corner. Okay.